If you hang around long enough with frontline mechanics, combat engineers, or the kind of veterans who could make a tank run with spit and curses, you eventually hear a story that sticks. One of those stories comes from the European and North African fronts of the Second World War, where a vehicle dying wasn't an inconvenience, it was an invitation to be overrun. Engines overheated constantly in brutal terrain, and when the enemy was pushing, nobody had the luxury of proper parts. What soldiers needed was a way to keep a truck, carrier, or even a small armoured vehicle moving long enough to stay alive. Out of that desperation came one of the simplest and smartest battlefield improvisations you'll ever study, the field radiator, built from nothing more than rocks, water, and a willingness to stay calm under fire. You don't need to romanticise it, the practicality alone is gripping. This wasn't theory, it wasn't training ground cleverness, it was something men relied on when metal had cracked, coolant had drained, and the convoy still had miles to cover. And if you study it closely, you realise it carries lessons any modern survivalist or historian can appreciate, because the principles remain true long after the battles have faded. The problem soldiers faced was simple, overheating engines with no functional radiator. Radiators in Second World War vehicles were notorious weak points. Shrapnel cut them open. Rocks pierced them. Desert heat boiled coolant off in minutes. In winter campaigns, thin metal cracked from thermal shock. And unlike today's sealed, pressurised systems, those engines bled heat inefficiently. Once the coolant leaked out, a vehicle usually became a dead weight. Crews often found themselves stranded with an engine that could technically still run, but no way to keep temperatures down. This is where understanding the physics of heat transfer became a lifesaver long before anyone on the ground would have used terms like conduction efficiency or thermal mass. They didn't need to know the vocabulary. They needed results. Fast. The trick worked because rocks act as a temporary thermal mass when coolant is gone. When soldiers couldn't repair a radiator, they turned to something that was always available. Stones. Dry, dense rocks absorb and hold heat extremely well. When packed around the exposed engine block, sometimes on top of manifolds, sometimes tucked into pockets of metal framing, they created an improvised heat sink. Add water and the system became even more effective. The water either flowed over the rocks, if soldiers could rig a small drip line, or simply soaked them, allowing evaporation to draw heat away. Each rock essentially served as a miniature cooling tower. It wasn't perfect, but it bought precious miles, and in wartime, miles meant survival. Let's break it down as they would have done it in a frozen Belgian forest or the scorching Libyan desert. First, the engine had to cool enough for them to touch and work without burning themselves. Then they gathered fist-sized rocks, never wet river stones which could explode from trap moisture, and packed them around the hottest parts of the engine's exterior. Soldiers often wedged them against the block or along the front where the radiator used to be. They poured water slowly so the rocks didn't crack from rapid temperature change, letting steam carry heat off. As the rocks heated, they swapped them out, replacing them with cooler ones. With enough manpower, they kept the cycle going long enough to limp a vehicle to safety. This wasn't a miracle trick. It was a controlled bleeding of heat using the materials at hand. The same logic 
can help modern survivalists when engines or heat sources overrun their limits. If you ever find yourself relying on equipment in a remote environment, be it a generator at an off-grid homestead, a small dirt bike engine on an expedition, or even a wood-burning stove running too hot, the World War II trick still applies. Rocks are one of the most reliable heat absorbers you can harvest immediately. If an engine begins to climb into the danger zone and coolant is leaking, you can temporarily cool the block externally the same way soldiers did, add thermal mass, apply water slowly, let evaporation do the work. In bushcraft settings, the principle extends beyond machinery. You can moderate the heat of a cooking pit, stabilize a metal container that's in danger of warping, or create a safer heat distribution surface by lining a firebed with dry stones before setting cookware down. The key to applying this knowledge today is, well, understanding the limits of the technique. It's not something that fixes a vehicle. It buys you time. In the Second World War, it sometimes bought 30 minutes, sometimes an hour, sometimes only a few hundred yards. But those yards mattered. The modern survivalist can treat it the same way. A last-ditch heat management method when you need to reach camp, reach shelter, or reach a point where real repairs become possible. The technique works because, honestly, Thermal physics haven't changed. Rocks don't argue. They don't wear out. And water evaporating over a hot surface still pulls heat off with ruthless efficiency. What made the trick memorable wasn't just cleverness. It was the refusal to surrender to mechanical failure. Soldiers understood that tools break, supply lines fail, and the environment doesn't care. What mattered was improvisation. That mindset translates into modern survival training perfectly. You're never out of options if you understand physical principles and can adapt them. This trick stands as a reminder that fieldcraft isn't a list of rehearsed steps. It's a way of thinking under pressure. If you found this guide useful and want more deep, historically grounded survival knowledge drawn from real wartime ingenuity, make sure you subscribe to Warfield Survival and share this video with fellow historians and enthusiasts. There's a lot more to learn from the past, and we uncover it here one battlefield lesson at a time.